Any time innocent life is lost is tragic and very sad. Muslims who are the true followers of Jesus, Moses, and all of God's prophets, with Muhammad just being the final and the last, condemn these evil acts. And we should all condemn them wherever they happen. Be it in Paris, Syria, Palestine, Burma, all innocent life is precious. Now, don't be selective in your condemnation because it's not cool or because you won't fit in if you condemn one but not all. Innocent life is precious. We condemn it anytime it's lost. Muslims have a genuine altruism because it's a basic teachings in Islam. And we would probably be the most upset when we hear such sad news because Muslims have the most to lose. It's very disheartening when you see ungenuine and malevolent people who are just looking to join any hate parade, coming out cursing, threatening, just augmenting the fire with their poisonous and toxic hate. These malevolent type of people are no different and would do no different than the terrorists themselves if given the chance. You hear them calling to kill all Muslims, vandalizing mosques, houses of worship where people go to worship in peace, attacking innocent Muslim women in hijab. These are those treacherous and demonic human beings. These are the real terrorists who are just waiting to do real terror against innocent Muslims. Their threats and actions are loud but no one seems to listen, no one seems to care or condemn. Most of these people who spew this nasty, toxic hate, if you look closely, are very arrogant people who already live very bitter and angry lives. Probably wouldn't give a poor man even a dime, nor attend to any neighborly needs, nor do they care what corruption is happening in their own backyard, let alone in Paris or any other part of the world. It's only when a hate parade is in town via Facebook, Twitter, or just to spew that poisonous hate at any chance they get. Really think about how depressing is that to live that kind of hate-filled life. Now let's compare that to our role model and example, the prophet of mercy who was sent to all of mankind, who was consoled by the Creator in the Quran because he was almost killing himself out of love worrying with grief because they had denied the Almighty and the pure monotheism of the maker of mankind, whose message was the same as Jesus and all of God's prophets, which was to proclaim God's oneness and to set up no one else in worship or have intermediaries next to the creator of mankind. The Quran is very explicit and clear. It tells us when an innocent life is lost, it's as though you have killed all of mankind. This is in the Quran, chapter 5, verse 32. But they say, look, ISIS, they're shouting Allahu Akbar representing you, and you guys are not condemning it. I said, look, my dear brother, what rock you've been under or hiding in. We condemn it very loud and very clear. The problem is, you just don't want to hear it. You seem to fit the description of when Jesus said, Though seeing, they see not. Though hearing, they do not understand. How many times are we going to tell you that this has nothing to do with Islam? How many Muslims and Muslim scholars have we had, just for instance, on the Dean Show, telling the world the same thing, but the media loves creating sensationalism instead of giving us a platform and a voice to educate. They instead help prop up and promote ISO as if they represent Islam, that 0.01 .01 fringe element that even Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had prophesied would come. He warned us Muslims about. These ISO kill more Muslims if you didn't know that too. Now the mainstream media, they don't dare give the spotlight nor advertise them 24-7 wall-to-wall coverage, groups such as Sovereign State, Neo-Nazis, or the KKK even though these groups are making so much trouble and are the greatest threat to America and national security. You don't hear peep. Just ISO, ISIS, all day, every day, programming people day by day. As I said, repeat a lie enough times and you'll get people to believe it. And that's what they do with their malevolent so-called paid Islamic experts who have more in common with ISIS and the KKK. These hearts, void of mercy and love, just joining any hate parade. We know that hundreds of thousands of innocent people have died just in a few years in Syria, Palestine, Burma, and the list goes on. And innocent people continue dying in these countries each and every day. Look it up and see what's going on. But there is little mention of it in the media or none at all. 
It's not good for business, nor do the American people know. No wall-to-wall -wall coverage to let the world know of these atrocities. We also have college university shootings, mega killings here each and every day, but it's quick news that quickly goes away, except when it has to do with Muslims and Islam. Then it's 24 hours wall-to-wall -wall coverage each and every day, never going away. Any time innocent life is lost, it's an atrocity that we all should condemn, wherever it may be. I want to talk to those who call themselves Muslim and remind them that your Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was a prophet for all of mankind, he warned you about going to extreme, from being extremely ignorant in your deen, from abandoning salat prayer, from abandoning giving in charity, and from being the best neighbor. He told you, you can rise up to the highest levels of Jannah by having the best manners and character, helping to change the world for the better, and not by spreading corruption and hate. He warned you from going to extremes in your religion and always to choose the middle path. Make toba to Allah, but don't remain ignorant in your deen, thinking you're going to get an easy ride, bringing that gangster stuff and mentality into Islam. You just made toba, alhamdulillah. You left off wine, strip clubs, gambling, and all immorality. But now you want to skip sitting at the feet of the scholars and really learning your deen. You read a few books, became an overnight shia, making your own fatwas, young, pumped up and naive. You want to go fight, you think you're brave. Again, bringing that fake gangster mentality into the deen. You can't even wake up for fajr. Go and help clean up your neighborhood. Connect with the people. Share with them your food and their right to know Islam. Be of the best of manners and character. Try to make the world a better place or at least keep people safe from your harm. For our brothers and sisters in humanity, please don't fall for the false media hype and don't be like ignorant fools who are harboring poisonous feelings infecting people with toxic hate. Quoting Quranic verses or hadith out of context with a malevolent agenda, You'll see when you take a sincere, even-handed approach that these violent crimes against humanity have nothing to do with Islam because Islam condemns it. Again, if you're sincere and you want to know the truth, go ahead and do your research. Now, why is this happening? You see, this is a geopolitical thing. Like when the Catholic Christian RRA, the Irish Republican Army, were just killing and blowing everything up, they wanted political freedom from the United Kingdom and viewed their land, Ireland, was illegally invaded, occupied, and illegitimately ruled by the British. They had a political grievance. But did we blame all of Christians for all the terror they had imposed? Just because someone screams, Allahu Akbar, God is great, before doing a crime, doesn't make them legit. The same way the notorious Pablo Escobar would cross himself up with the Trinity before he murdered, terrorized, and raised hell, killing thousands of innocent people, and others exactly like him who might not scream God is great, but silently they were throwing up the three-point cross as Andrew Brellick and the Crusaders did. So again, we don't blame all Christianity because of the actions of the KKK, nor all us Americans because of an atomic bomb, nor all Jews because of the radical extreme Zionists who are perpetrating terrorism and anti-Semitism against Palestinians who are Semitic too. Remember, terrorism has no faith and knows no boundaries. Jews, Christians, and Muslims, all people of other faiths, need to work together, collaborate together in goodness to create an atmosphere of understanding and love, and not hate. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below.